Aside from the rumors, where does DBD and behavior actually stand on these licenses from an internal standpoint? In other words, the next few licenses are likely in development right now at behavior. So which licenses are most likely those secret collaborations happening behind the scenes right now? What licenses would behavior prioritize right now? They're not just going to grab any willing license holder. We haven't reached that point yet, have we? Hey everyone, it's Schmuckles. Today we're going to rank which licenses I think are most likely next in Dead by Daylight. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. I'm also live on Twitch right now streaming an open lobby survivor attorney. Anyone is welcome to join my public lobbies right now on Twitch. You can use these commands for more information on how to join or if you want information on how the attorney is scored. Link for my Twitch channel in the description below. It's important to remember that these are speculations. Nothing about these licenses are confirmed by Behavior Interactive or have been leaked by entirely credible sources. So make sure to take this information with a grain of salt. These are educated guesses for fun. We've done videos like this in the past speculating which licenses are most likely based on the status of each license. But as time goes on, previous speculations seem less and less likely. We just had an Alan Wake survivor paragraph for whatever reason prioritized over the Walking Dead survivors. If Behavior was able to get the Walking Dead license, why would they prioritize a smaller license as a survivor paragraph, when a larger license would have fit much better? This kind of leads me to believe that Behavior hasn't gotten this license and therefore it likely won't be coming anytime soon. Could this somehow be on AMC's end? I'm still working to figure that out. Reminder that the next license is probably not Jason Voorhees. On October 4th, 2020, 23, the King released a video of Matthew Cote explicitly saying that they don't have the Jason Voorhees license. If we had a good way in, we'd probably take a shot because it's Jason, right? Jason. Mm -hmm. uh, but but so far there's been no opportunities. It's just it's just too complicated. That interview came from the King. I'm going to link the full interview in the description below. So anytime from October 4th, 2023 to about a year after that, Jason Voorhees likely won't be entering the game because based on that timeline, that's about how long it takes to develop a full licensed chapter. The Friday the 13th franchise, which sometimes gets inside news, posted this about the franchise. On January 10th, 2024, they said there have not been a lot of posts on our website lately as there's a number of things happening behind the scenes. The actor and writer strike put a dent in plans last year along with some other circumstances, but one big promise. Big things are coming for Friday the 13th and this year look for an announcement or two to hit the web, maybe someone's rather than later. Our beloved franchise has put you through some emotional rigor the past 15 years, but please be assured that Voorhees is almost back to haunt your dreams. And apparently, according to the Friday the 13th franchise website, Peacock's Crystal Lake show shooting schedule had an update on January 14th of this year. Before the writer's strike, the tentative date for the show to start shooting was March 2024. And as of right now, not a single scene has been shot for the series. We've learned recently that filming for the series is now targeting a summer 2024 start, which should then kick off a slew of updates pertaining to the events surrounding Crystal Lake. So the bottom line is the strikes actually push back the film date and people are getting hopeful that starting in the summer, we're going to be getting regular updates for the franchise. They even said, look for some other Friday the 13th franchise announcements coming soon this year. And that makes me wonder if it's going to be at all related to that Friday the 13th game that was allegedly leaked and in the works. Because I got to tell you, there's been actually no new news or information about that video game. It seems like it was leaked, but I'm starting to question whether it's actually real or not. You should have a better idea if that was actually real later this year. So make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to be up to day with all of that licensing news. I do think that there's probably going to be a new license coming to Dead by Daylight before Friday the 13th actually straightens out their legal entanglements. There is a whole bunch of wildcard licenses that could potentially be possible in the future for DBD. The thing could potentially be possible if Universal Studios liked the collaboration with Chucky. Slenderman's kind of a wildcard at this point too. Maybe Slender the Arrival has gained some traction and made the franchise relevant right now. They had their 10 year anniversary update and a Game Rant interview with a Blue Oz Studio dev revealed information about this update. Update. Game Rant recently interviewed Brandon Frank, co-founder and technical director at Blue Isle Studios. Frank also spoke about how the update preserves the original game while adding new features. We worked really hard to maintain the essence of the original title, choosing to add rather than remake. This is why we added a new chapter and have announced a three chapter DLC coming in 2024. So there you have it, there's new content coming for Slender the Arrival later this year. So do you think that they timed the arrival of this DLC with some sort of Slenderman Dead by Daylight licensing deal? It seems possible, it seems like something that should be on our radar and therefore Slenderman is a wild card. There is also absolutely huge news this year regarding Sydney Prescott and the Scream franchise. This is actually great news for Sydney Prescott fans. 
fans. Apparently, Nev Campbell is open to returning to the Scream franchise under the right circumstances. And this is from January 13, 2024. As we already know, Campbell announced last year that she was leaving the Scream franchise. She didn't feel that she was being properly compensated for the value that she brings to the franchise. Even so, she could see herself coming back someday under the right circumstances. Campbell told the writer of this article that previous Saturday at the BFTA tea event at the Mayborn Hotel in Beverly Hills. So literally, the writer of this article was just chit-chatting with Nev Campbell and she said that this year. Campbell hopes the franchise will continue. I honestly have no idea what their plans are. I know a lot has gone on around it and I'm sure they're spinning a little bit at the moment. She continued, these movies mean a lot to us and they mean a lot to the fans. I go to these conventions sometimes and I meet the fans and they're frantic about these films. These films mean a lot to them and these characters mean a lot to them. So even for their sake, I would love to see it continue. I think the same kind of terminology and logic could be applied for bringing Sidney Prescott into Dead by Daylight. I don't think it'd be hard for Nev Campbell to fully understand the impact that that character would have if she joined the fog. So we'll have to wait and see what happens in the future. And the reason I don't have this license in my top five is even though you could use this news to speculate that Sidney Prescott will eventually join Dead by Daylight, a lot would actually have to happen from this date and I think likely they have a license deal lined up that would occur before this. Do you remember when Candyman said at the San Diego Comic Con last year that he was working on another game? We speculated that this could have potentially been Dead by Daylight related, but I actually found out that it probably wasn't. On January 18th, it was announced that Game Machines reveals Indiana Jones and the Great Circle coming later this year, also starring Tony Todd. The game will use the likeness of Harrison Ford with Troy Baker voicing Indy. And fresh from his stint as Venom in Marvel Spider-Man 2, the game will also star Tony Todd, which means that Candyman has now fallen back into a wildcard slot. I've been thinking about this a lot, and I don't think any universal monsters are going to be coming to Dead by Daylight anytime soon, and there's two reasons for that. One is that behaviors kind of said that they probably wouldn't bring in these kinds of monsters into Dead by Daylight. Instead, they'd probably do their own original spin on the same folklore that these Universal monsters are based on. And two, Universal Studios might actually not be on board with something like that for a reason as simple as they wouldn't want their monsters to be portrayed as evil. Universal Pictures likes people to see those monsters as just misunderstood creatures, which is very different from how killers are portrayed in Dead by Daylight. We got a lot of wild cards, so which licenses are actually in the top five right? now. My number five right now is actually Until Dawn. Adding Alan Wake into DVD shows that Behavior is actively testing the waters outside of major video games and movie licenses as standalone content. They're currently working with the Until Dawn devs to make an Until Dawn-like video game set in the DVD universe. Behavior has paired with Supermassive to make the casting of Frank Stone. And these are the same game devs that worked on Until Dawn. So that's the basis for Until Dawn being number five on this list. There's a couple reasons why I can't put Until Dawn any higher on this list. One is it's kind of a niche license that we've never seen behavior do a standalone chapter with a fully niche license. They've only brought in really big licenses as chapters up to this point. And two, Supermassive technically doesn't even own Until Dawn. I found this forum on Reddit here from five years ago. Someone asked since Supermassive Games isn't owned by Sony. Sony just helped co-develop the game. Can Until Dawn come to PC in the future? Someone responded and said, nope, Sony owns the IP rights for Until Dawn, not Supermassive. That's why Until Dawn is not considered part of Dark Pictures Anthology. They legally can't include it. This person went on to say, so unfortunately Until Dawn will remain Sony exclusive until they sell the IP. They also said, all I know is Sony owns Until Dawn and they don't plan to release it on other platforms. This was five years ago. And this was someone just saying something on Reddit about Sony owning Until Dawn. And then on January 24th of this year, this is actually the primary source for this leak. Until Dawn, this PlayStation exclusive will soon benefit from a brand new version on these platforms. And this is sourced by Bill Bill Kun. Since 2016, Bill Kun has been a real deal finder for D-Labs. With his talent, he quickly specialized in revealing information in advance, which he now presents exclusively here. So this guy's actually a reputable leaker and there's actually been news articles based on this guy's article right here. This guy was able to determine through investigations that the return of an old PlayStation exclusive under a new version and on more than one platform. Until Dawn soon on PS5 but also PC. The title was released on August 2015 on PS4 exclusively. And in the recent days, The Hollywood Reporter revealed that a film adaptation of the game Until Dawn was in productions by Sony Pictures. So it really does seem like this is a Sony decision and Sony actually owns the distribution right to this property. So the reason Until Dawn is number five on this list is because although Behavior is working with the developers who developed Until Dawn, it doesn't seem like they actually own the rights to the IP itself but could still potentially be an avenue for behavior getting the license. Number four is an Atomic Monster or Blumhouse IP. We saw that about a year ago, the owner of both of these companies, Jason Blum and James Wan, mentioned the possibility of Megan and DBD. They were kind of joking about this in an interview. Well, it's been about a year since that point. They've been working closely with Behavior Interactive on the movie. So actually the timeline works out such that they could have actually licensed in a new property into the game since then. Since it takes about a year for Behavior to fully develop licensed content, a timeline like this could make sense. 
So which of the licenses are possible from these movie studios? On January 2nd of this year, the Blumhouse Atomic Monster merge was completed. Jason Blum's Blumhouse and James Wan's Atomic Monster, the two preeminent production companies working in horror, have completed their long-awaited merger, Blum announced on Tuesday. Jason Blum tweeted out, our deal is done. Blumhouse and Atomic Monster have officially joined forces. The preeminent homes for horror are now under one roof. And I was wondering, what exactly does this mean in terms of licensing for these properties? Under the merger, the companies will continue to operate as separate labels with each maintaining its own creative autonomy and brand identity. The alliance is expected to increase their combined output, with Atomic Monster to utilize Blumhouse's existing infrastructure to scale its activities across film, TV, and new content areas including games, live experiences, and audio. Going forward, Atomic Monster will also benefit from the first look deal with Universal Pictures that Blumhouse is currently under, having come to the conclusion of its own deal with Warner Bros. So it seems like Blumhouse and Atomic Monster are now under contract under the same deal with Universal Pictures, and Atomic Monster used to have its own deal with Warner Bros, but that's now over. Blumhouse is known on the film side for horror franchises like Paranormal Activity, The Purge, Halloween, The Exorcist, and The Black Phone. Atomic Monster, meanwhile, is famous for work on film series like The Conjuring, Insidious, and Saw. I'm not sure why Megan wasn't listed as one of these films here, but all of these films plus Megan I think are fair game for licensing from either one of these production companies. So these are the potential licenses that Behavior could actually get if they were to work with these companies. Number three is Predator. It's not really a matter of if, but when. Predator seems like the easiest license to get inside of the top 10 aside from Vecna. It's not a matter of licensing through different subsidiaries within Universal. Predator is owned by the same subsidiary as Alien 20th Century Studios. Behavior works on chapters far in the future. So licenses like Chucky, Alan Wake, and original chapters may have been lined up during the acquisition of the Alien license, which could potentially explain why we haven't got a Predator chapter right after the Alien chapter. Something like this that's a little bit less niche seems more likely than anything we've covered on our list so far. Number two is Springtrap. The Five Nights at Freddy's game Into the Pit has actually officially been leaked since we even talked about Five Nights at Freddy's in the previous video the other day. Scott Cawthon responded to the leaked Five Nights at Freddy's Into the Pit game. He said, no need to keep it all hush-hush, it's okay. Yes, I was trying to keep it a secret for a bit longer, but now that it's out, that's fine. This game has been in development for a really long time, actually, and I'm really proud of the final product. It will be a 10th anniversary game. So we've been getting a first look at so much new merchandise. This is actually a new game that's coming with the 10 year anniversary. And on top of that, Scholastic actually released a 2024 publishing schedule for Five Nights at Freddy's. So Scott said this, Mega Cat Studios then tweets this out on January 25th at 5.11 AM. Hi folks, we've got the official green light from Scott to confirm that FNAF Into the Pit is indeed happening. More details to come soon and thank you for the amazing feedback and enthusiasm. We can't wait to show you more from one FNAF to another. Thank you for being a part of this exciting journey with us. And I wanted to know more about who is Mega Cat Studios. This actually comes directly from their website. We love to make games for people that love to play them. We are an independent video game studio with a global team of cats who have come together to create fun. We are all gamers and collectors first. We love creating games from retro cartridges to PC and the current generation consoles. So that's another collaboration with other game devs from Scott right there. I don't think he's ever worked with these game devs before in the past. And listen to what Daco actually said about this leaked game. Unfortunately, later on today, the actual trailer of the game has been leaked. It's really disappointing that Scott and the amazing developers who have worked probably years on this game didn't have the opportunity to release it themselves. It really, really sucks. As soon as it got leaked, I messaged Scott about it. You're probably wondering why, Dorco, if it's leaked, why are you making a video reaction about it? Scott messaged me back saying, do me a favor, do a video covering the trailer. Let's just get it out there. Here I am, do my duty for Scott. Um, Let's react to the trailer. We've had so much news and information about the 10 year anniversary and upcoming content with FNAF revealed by Scott and leaked and Scott was okay with the leak. So now for me, the question becomes the big 10 year anniversary is right around the corner. What surprises would Scott have in store that actually hasn't been leaked or known yet? We've seen a couple collaborations kind of leaked for this year for FNAF. And out of all the big surprises, there's only a couple really big possible ones left that could potentially be announced for the 10 year anniversary for FNAF. A Dead by Daylight chapter, a collaboration with Fall Guys, or Fortnite. Just the fact that Scott's game was leaked and he gave Daco the green light to actually post about it, it makes me wonder if there are bigger surprises in store behind the scenes. So Springtrap actually takes number two on this list. And number one is Vecna. Aside from the D&D Vecna rumors that we've covered on this channel, Vecna still would seem the most likely even if those are fake. Stranger Things posted this is a code red. Stranger Things 5 production has officially begun on January 8th of this year. They actually showed the picture of the table read with the cast and it looks like any month 
months and is somehow not in this picture. Maybe he's taking the picture, I don't know. But anyways, the question as to whether or not Vecna is coming into Dead by Daylight, I think pretty much comes down to probabilities and percentages. For Vecna to not come into Dead by Daylight, we'd have to be asking the question, what are the odds that Netflix renewed with behavior and doesn't want to bring in new content to DVD? The answer to that question seems like pretty low odds to me. Solely based on this line of reasoning, I think Vecna takes number one. What do you think about my list? What do you think about the theories and existing speculations out there? Let me know in the comment section below. The idea of Vecna or Springtrap coming into Dead by Daylight kind of is lining up with the anniversary chapter for me. Unless those Vecna rumors were actually fake and Vecna comes in at a later date. But for those two licenses, we're talking as soon as the anniversary chapter. While the last two anniversary chapters have been original chapters with new maps, really big original events celebrating original IPs in DVD. So does that mean that Behavior would only have original anniversaries going forward, which would kind of debunk those two speculations? Well, no, at the recent Ask Me Anything that happened a month ago, someone asked, are anniversary chapters now only going to be original, or will they sometimes be licensed and sometimes original? And Dave Richards said, our only rules is that there's no rules and we don't talk about clubs. So here he's pretty much saying, well, no, licensed chapters are fair game for the anniversaries too. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel if you want to see more content like this. And reminder, I'm live on Twitch right now, streaming open lobbies, anyone can join my lobbies right now on Twitch and Dead by Daylight. The link for my Twitch stream is in the description below. That does it for this video. Goodbye.